Hello, hello, Blended Nation, and welcome for another lesson on using the wonderful, delightful, inspiring application blender. The blender version I'm using, as you can clearly see, is Blender 2.80 Beta. This, my topic for the day, is using a reference image. And so there are plenty of videos that's talking about how to use Blender 2.80 Beta, but none of them get into the meaty, beefy aspects into it. How to make something, how to do something. Some of them do that, or if they do show you, they super advanced. What I'm gonna show you today is something that a beginner or you know, like an intermediate person should know how to use those reference image in Blender 2.80 because a lot has changed compared to Blender, Blender 2.79 and prior versions. There are a lot of changes that's made that took me a long time to discover. And that's the negative about Blender. That's one negative about Blender. We love it, but when you're learning it, you got to learn it on your own. There's no corporation that's going to give you a training seminar on it. I have to ask other people for help and it's trial and error. I guess that's the only knock about open source. It's wonderful, but for the most part, you have to learn it on your own. All right, so let's begin. I'm gonna get rid of my favorite cube that we all know and love. I like to call it Harold the Cube. So goodbye, Harold the Cube. I wish you a next, a wonderful journey to the afterlife. There, he's gone. You know, the two, to, to use reference images, we have to break our windows into at least different, at least three sections. One thing I learned, now we're gonna learn about how to do those three sections, but one thing I do love about Blender 2.80, if you recall in Blender 2.79 and beyond that, in the lower right corner, that's where you was, that's where you were, well, the lower corner, any lower, you can, in any corner really, top left, top right, top bottom, whatever, any corner, You'll see these little crosshairs, what I'm showing you right now. Little crosshair in the upper right. Little crosshair in the upper left. Little crosshair in the lower left. What makes this version of Bender so delightful, it's a minor change, but if you notice, all the edges are beveled. Between the report and the next, and the, the bar, there's a little teeny black space. So in this version of Bender, Things are not connected. It's not connected, and the edges are beveled. So let me make my little reports now. I'm, here's my two vertical reports. I'm gonna come back now, now. You can use any of these that you'd like to use. You can use any of these little edges that you'd like to use. But since I'm right-handed, I like to use this lower right corner. That's my preference. I'm coming. Oh, it's getting sort of tricky. It'll take your time. Okay, I got my three little rule views. Now, one thing I do love about Blender 2.80, I don't have a keyboard. The only, the major way, is other ways of getting to orthographic view, which we need, was they always hit that five. But now there's an icon, instead of always having to hit five. So I think Blender's 2.80 is trying to get rid of a lot of key pressing. It's trying to make all the little things easier to get to. So you see this plus symbol. You got this plus symbol. You got a little hand. You got the old time Hollywood video camera. And we got this grid. This grid. You have to click on the grid. Let us throw us to orthographic view. So I'm going to each of my views and act activate orthographic view. Hmm. Now, when I made my images, we're gonna need the let me we're gonna need the front, side, and back view. So I'm gonna shut that up, set that up now. But here's the catch. When we had Blender 2.79 and beyond, if I hit the end key. It would give me everything I need. That's no longer the case now. When I hit the end key, all I'm gonna get over and over is the viewpoint option, the 3D cursor, and the annotations. It took me a long time 
30 minutes or more to discover where was those dialog boxes to control my background image. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes after I add my images first or after I set it up. So to set it up, we have to go to, because now it's no longer on the end, pressing that end key tab, you have to go to add. Go to add, choose images. Well, I want to set up, I'm sorry, I want to set up my views first. Before I add my in, image, I want to set up the view. So I'm going to go to view, view, report, viewpoint. I'm going to set it up for front. It's good to do that first before you add the image. Make, at least make the screen look tidy looking. I'm going to go to view, viewpoint. I want to add my back. I'm going to go to view again. Viewpoint. Then I'm going to choose my side. In this case, my right side. So I have that set up. Now, I can go into my <coughs> adding that particular image and I'm gonna give you a clue before I start it I'm gonna make I'm, I like to make I like to make organic figures with blender I know some people like to make cars and trucks and airplanes like but my forte is making organic figures and I've been using blender since version 2.76 so I'm not a I'm not no pro yet I'm still learning like everybody else the person who I'm gonna add is the main antagonist against the DC hero previously was called Captain Marvel but now his name is Shazam so I give y'all three seconds to guess who I'm gonna add the enemy the protagonist of the Shazam character from DC Comics and when the film come out I hope y'all go see the film it look, it look like a nice Shazam film alright so let me add my image now add image background I'm gonna go to my pictures oh god why not showing oh that was public I'm gonna go to pictures human body and my figure is front view ta-da black Adam I'm going over here to my off the I'm going over here to my my upper right hand corner to add my image. I'm going to choose add. See? And that add is no longer with the end key. You have to choose add. So that's a difference right there. When you have when you have the end key and prior versions of Blender, that would give you everything. Now you have to do a little bit of searching. Add image back. I'm going to choose back. Ah. Sorry, sorry about that. Black Adam back. Alright, there's his back. I'm coming down here now. Add the image. Go to image. Choose background. And I'm going to choose side. It doesn't matter if there's left side, right side, as long as it says side. I'm coming back over to my main viewport on the right. Or on the left, I'm sorry. I want to add a mesh. And this, my meshes are going to be a plane. You don't see it, but my plane is there. But since it's the front view, it's laying flat on the X axis. So I'm going to rotate it. Rotate X 90 degrees and boom. There's my plane. While I'm doing this, my good people, I'm going to save it. Save. I'm going to call this Black Adam. Black Adam. One thing I do like about Blender 2.80 better beta, it does crash, but it doesn't crash the way Blender 2.2.80 Alpha did. It still crashes and hangs up on me sometimes, and I don't even do nothing sophisticated with it. All right, I'm gonna hit Z to go into wireframe. Z, choose wireframe, and that's this another feature I like. Now I'm getting these little menus. I forgot what it's called, but it's no longer an option. And that blender preference is automatic now. Okay, so I can see him. Now here's the catch right here. I told you when you hit in, you no longer see all them commands to manipulate my image. They're gone. 
I want to click on my image. When I click on my image, all the way over here to the right, follow my mouse, down the third bottom, the third icon from the bottom. I see this little circle thing. I see a checkerboard. The one with the triangle and the thing that, I, that looks like a moon or a sun, that will control your background image. No longer the end key. Now it seems like Blender 2.80 is giving a huge amount of responsibility to this, the properties window. Oh, and I do like now how they have the uh, little icons vertical. I always got tired when it was horizontal because you always have to you always have to open, expand a window. Vertical is, is fantastic, at least for me it is. Now, my image is hot. I had to click on my image. It's highlighted, so I want to rotate it into the, fit, to the fitness box, so it's sort of even. Then I expand my box more. So I'm going to click on Y, move my image over. Oops, it's not Y. I'm sorry, I have to move X. X, okay, like he's in the box. Now I can tighten up my box. I click back on my plane. I'm going to scale it on the x-axis. I'm going to scale it a little bit inwards. A little bit. Okay, that's it. All right, good. So we got the widest part of his body, which is those arms extended. Now I'm going to handle the vertical part of his body. So you see that's the z-axis from that blue line. S, scale, z. I go up. Try to get him in here as tight as possible. That looks good, that looks good. Okay, that looks perfect. And you know, since I'm not getting paid no money for this, it's good. I, I just can eyeball it. I ain't getting paid no money. I'm going to go up here and hit File, Save Again in case it crash. Now I'm going to come back over here to my back orthographic view. I click on, this, on my um, plane. I want to hit Z. Go to wireframe. Now we see it looks a lot different. He is not in that box completely. So now I have to click on the background image. I click. Then I have to go over here. You see that, like I said, that little triangle in the box. I have to change the size of my image. So let me see what happens if I change the size of him. See, he's getting larger, he's getting larger, he's getting larger. Uh, I have to move him around some too. Put him in that box. I, I want to keep him in the box. Okay, his arms are in the box. I have to make him larger a little bit more. Let's see. I hope he's staying in the box. Okay, he's in. He's in. I better save it. He's in the box. So you saw what I did. If he's not in the box completely or good enough to your satisfaction, you do have to change the size. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna, his foot hanging out a little bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 6.1. Oh, that's too small. So I say I say 6.3. How's that? Just a little bit better. 6.5. Okay, he's getting there. Oh, I have to adjust. Let me see. His foot hanging out. So I'm just going to go on, go, come down here to the Y axis and move him up. Okay, he's in. Good. So you see, I have to adjust the size over here on the properties window. I, ha I have to stress that. No longer can we use the, the end key for all those particular properties. We have to go up there to the properties menu to manipulate that background image. I hope that's clear. All right, now I'm back onto my um, my plane. Now I have to go to edit mode. Now let me go to edit mode. Edit mode. Now all I'm going to do highlight it. Hit A. Hit A. Now I'm going to grab it, I'm going to grab my plane, grab it on the y-axis and put it in front of him. There it is. Now, I want to extrude it. I want my, I'm not going to make Black Adam, everyone. I'm not going to make him. That'll take forever. I just want to show you how I can have him in a bounding box. And if I made him, 
He would fit inside that box nice and neat. I had my, I'm in edit mode. My line or my plane is on his chest and his feet. So now I can extrude it on the Y axis. Let me make sure. Yes. E Y. Extrude it. And there. He's in. I'm going to come here to my others. Hit Z. Put it back on solid. Come over here to my far, to my left, my left report. Click on my box. I go. I gotta take out the edit mode. Take out the edit mode. Put it in object mode. Click on my box. Hit Z. Solid. Now, see, I just wanted to show you all I had a bounding box to hold him in. I'm not gonna make him. I rotate. You see, he. If I made him, he would fit conveniently inside that box or his coffin, if you will. <laughs> He can fit. If I made Black Adam, this would be his coffin. So, if you like me going over how to use a reference image and a background image, please give me a thumbs up. If you got any pointers or tips for me as a beginner user, please feel free to give me tips on how to improve myself. I hope this helped you all. Happy blendering. Keep studying, Blender, and like me, I don't give up. I'm relentless. Since it's free, and since it's professional, when I have spare time, I guarantee you, my good people, I love my Blender. I love it. Especially when they put so much energy and effort into it to keep it robust and professional. So if you like what I did, thumbs up. You got a comment, give me a co comment. Have a good day. Happy Blendering, everyone.